Hi there folks, this is a video on the heart rate response to exercise. Now the videos you should have watched before this are the cardiac cycle and uh, the heart's conduction system. When we looked at the heart's conduction system, I emphasised the point that this is how the heart controls the rate at which it beats, i.e. there's no mention of exercise at all. What we're looking at now is what happens to the heart rate as we exercise and when we stop exercising. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, heart rate increases when I start to exercise. My pulse rate, my heart rate, whatever you want to call it, increases. And when I stop exercising, my heart rate and my pulse rate decrease. What you've got to be able to do is say how these processes come about. Now, as you can see at the top, we've got uh, a picture of the brain that controls everything in our body. You know, all of our thoughts, all of our memories, but it controls all of our body systems. It's the it's the central processing unit, if you want to think of it like that. Now, the brain has to be told that we have started to exercise. It doesn't know that for itself. And we have various receptors in our body that will pass information onto the brain to say that we have started exercising. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at and consider this lady here. She has just started running. Now, what changes are going to take place in her body? Right, well, number one, CO2 levels are going to increase because she's producing more CO2 as she's exercising. Okay, what else is going to happen? Well, blood pressure is going to increase as she started to exercise as well. Okay, and also... Muscle movement is going to increase. Now, that information is going to get passed on to the brain and the brain is going to come up with the only logical conclusion it can come up with, oh, we have started exercising. However, there's something else you must know. Okay, because questions can come up on this separately. Okay, CO2, and I'm going to draw a line all the way around this side. What monitors CO2 levels? What is looking for this change in CO2? Well, it's a certain special receptor called a chemo receptor. Chemo's in chemical because Cam dioxide is a chemical. So a chemoreceptor is going to look for changes or increases in this instance in CO2. In terms of an increase in blood pressure, that is going to be detected by a baroreceptor. Think of it this way, a barometer, you might have heard people talk about bar using barometers. They're things that um, you know measure air pressure. So anything to do with pressure is baro. Okay, so baroreceptor detects that increase in blood pressure. And finally, what's detecting that increase in muscle movement? It's a structure you may have heard of. It's called a proprioceptor. They also detect things like balance and body position in space, but in terms of this, they all detect muscle movement. Now, there are three very, very important structures that exist all around our body, and you need to know what they're detecting. So that when we start to exercise, chemoreceptors detect an increase in CO2, baroreceptors detect an increase in blood pressure, proprioceptors detect an increase in muscle movement. Okay? Now, I'm going to wipe those off, but be aware that those are the key things... Uh, that you need to know about. So what I've just done is I've just quickly abbreviated on this side. What you've got is CO2 increase detected by chemoreceptors, blood pressure increase detected by baroreceptors, muscle movement increase detected by proprioceptors. And as I said, they're going to pass this information onto the brain. But in particular, a very, very important structure in the brain, the medulla oblongata. Okay, now that's the structure that controls our heart rates, our breathing rates, our blood pressures, our uh, how much blood flow we've got going to and from the muscles, things like that. So that's a very special structure in the brain, the medulla oblongata. Now what I've just drawn on there is what happens next. The medulla oblongata 
is going to send an impulse down this structure here, a nerve that connects the medulla into the heart, specifically into the SA node. And as remember from the, um, the video that we looked at on the heart conduction system, the SA node is the thing that generates the impulse to set a heartbeat off. Well, obviously that needs to be told to go quicker when we are exercising like this lady is doing here. So what your medulla does is send an impulse down the sympathetic nervous system which connects the medulla to the SA node in your heart. And what it simply says to your SA node is, please increase heart rate. More beats per minute, please, to deliver more oxygenated blood to the muscles, allowing this lady here to start exercising. So if you're ever given the question, how does the heart rate, or sorry, how does exercise affect heart rate, Quite simple, when I exercise, I get an increase in CO2 levels detected by the chemoreceptors. I get an increase, increase in blood pressure detected by the baroreceptors and I get an increase in muscle movement detected by the proprioceptors. They're gonna feed that information into the medulla, your medulla or medulla oblongata, whichever you prefer, in the brain. The brain's gonna to come to the conclusion that because these three have increased CO2, blood pressure, muscle movement, we must be exercising. So it then sends an impulse down the sympathetic nervous system into the SA node and heart rate increases. Okay? Okay, so that deals with this lady here about to exercise. What about when this lady st has stopped exercising, right? How are we then going to bring the heart rate back down to resting levels? Now, like I said, it'd be nice to think that everything we've just said above stops. And that is kind of what happens, but there is a slight difference. And that's what we're going to look at now. Now, those of you that are eagle-eyed will have just noticed there's been a change in this box here. We've still got chemoreceptors for CO2. We've still got baroreceptors for blood pressure. And we've still got proprioceptors for muscle movement. But just have a look at this, right? The arrows are now pointing down. Now that I have stopped exercising, CO2 levels are going to decrease. Blood pressure is going to decrease and muscle movement is going to decrease because I am now like this. I've stopped. I've stopped producing as much CO2 because I've stopped my blood pressure has dropped and because I've stopped my muscles aren't moving as much. So now the chemoreceptors are going to detect a decrease in CO2. Bioreceptors are going to detect a decrease in blood pressure and proprioceptors are going to detect a decrease in muscle movement. However, that information is still going to get passed on to the medulla oblongata or the medulla in the brain. Okay, but this time, we are the medulla is now going to send an impulse down a different nervous system, and this one is called the parasympathetic nervous system. I'll just put NS but you know it stands for nervous system. But again, that parasympathetic goes into the SA node, the same as the sympathetic nervous system does. But this time, as I've said, because I've stopped exercising, the parasympathetic nervous system is going to tell the SA node that heart rate now needs to decrease. It needs to slow back down to rest in levels okay now that is how we control heart rate during and after exercise common things and little tricks that people use para sympathetic what does a parachute do a parachute slows you down so what does the parasympathetic do it decreases your heart rate the sympathetic begins with an s that speeds up your heart rate so that might be a little trick a way to remember what each system does the key thing though is this making your making sure you are saying what the changes are you will not get marks if you say there is a change in co2 and it's detected by the chemoreceptors you've got to look at the question is this person exercising or have they stopped exercising if they have just started to exercise like this lady here there is going to be an increase in co2 detected by the chemoreceptors. If this, the lady has stopped exercising, like she has here, that is where you're going to report a decrease in CO2, a decrease in blood pressure, and a decrease in muscle movement. So you've got to know the names of these three receptors 
and what they detect and whether it is detecting an increase or a decrease. The clue there is going to be, is this person starting to exercise or stopping? You've got to know that these three receptors always pass their information onto the medulla in the brain. What the medulla then does is send an impulse down either the sympathetic or the parasympathetic nerve into the SA node. If it's sending an impulse down the sympathetic nerve, the SA node is stimulated to produce a faster heart rate. If the impulse is sent down the parasympathetic nerve, the SA node is stimulated to produce a decrease or lowering of the heart rate. What effects, whether the sympathetic or the parasympathetic nerve is used, is what's happening here. If these three are increasing, I am exercising, so it's the sympathetic nerve that I send an impulse down. If these three here are decreasing, it's the parasympathetic nerve that I send an impulse down because I've obviously stopped exercising. So a lot to take on board. Watch this video as many times as you can and use the information in your workbooks to support that. Have a read of it, have a watch of the video and have a go at the past paper questions. Good luck with it, folks. Okay, what we've got here is a heart rate graph. Okay, so what we are demonstrating is that heart rate at rest, you are about 60 beats a minute. As we move into exercise, heart rate starts to increase until it gets to a high point and then when we go into our recovery phase heart rate starts to decrease back down roughly towards resting levels that's what we should see what is this a graph of this is a graph of someone who is doing maximal Exercise. How do we know that? Because heart rate is getting quite high, close to 200, which is what you know you should be doing. Very, you know, you remember 220 minus your age. You're nice and young, so your maximum will be around here. But someone my age, their maximum will be round about there. Okay. But what we're also seeing is the time that they are at that that heart rate is very very short which shows that they've not been able to maintain that for very long, highlighting the fact that they are probably working flat out and that's why they've not been able to maintain it. Let's analyse this in little bits, okay? During rest, what are we at here? This is our RHR, our resting heart rate. We should be around about 60 beats a minute. What we're seeing at around about phase B is a gradual increase. Increase in heart rate. Okay, that is what we're seeing at around about stage B. Let's change the pen because these are a bit close to each other. By the time we get to stage C, as you can see, sorry, um, we are now in the exercise period as we've started to exercise. Heart rate has gradually started to increase. As we now get to stage C, we're getting close to maximum. So what we're seeing here is that heart rate approaches max value and what we see at D is I'm going to put M H R maximum heart rate you are working at maximum heart rate but as we've said look this person is not there for very long because you can't work for very long at your maximum heart rate think of the bleep test when you're getting to the top end of it where you're about to drop out you can't maintain that for very long at all it's a very short period in time what we then see Okay, is we then start to enter our recovery phase. So now we start to ease up, we start to slow down. So what we're starting to see there, as we saw gradual increase in heart rate around point B, what we're now seeing is a gradual decrease in heart rate. That's for point E. And as we see point F, we're seeing a return to RHR, resting heart rate. I'm putting RHR because I haven't got the space. Make sure you always put resting heart rate. And when I've put MHR, make sure you put maximum heart rate as well. Remember, you're not allowed to abbreviate in the exam. What we kind of see in here, where does it link on from the slide that we've just done? Well, just think, here, at point number A, or at level A, we are at rest. There's hardly any change in heart rate at all. But now, we're in the exercise period. 
Heart rate is starting to increase. So what is happening? CO2 levels are rising. Blood pressure is rising. Muscle movement is rising. That's all being passed on to the medulla. The medulla is sending an impulse down the sympathetic nerve and heart rate is increasing. Okay? As soon as we stop, okay, running, what is going to cause that reduction in heart rate? Well, CO2 levels are going to decrease. Blood pressure is going to decrease. Muscle movement is going to decrease. Okay, and they're detected by the chemo, baro and proprioceptors. An impulse, sorry, that's going to get passed on to the medulla again. But this time the medulla is going to send an impulse down the parasympathetic nervous system. Remember, parachute slows you down. Parasympathetic is going to slow heart rate down until it is back down to resting heart rate levels. Okay? Now, finally, if we look at this slide, you might be thinking, James, hang on, that's in that very similar to the one we've done. Well, no, it's a different shape particularly around point D, which is kind of the point in this, okay? Again, um, if we look on the x-axis along the bottom, we've got our rest periods, our exercise, and our recovery. So rest, what are we looking at here? Point A again, resting heart rate, and if we were to write this on again, point A, we are at RHR, resting heart rate, around about 60 beats a minute. Again, Point B, what we're looking at there, oops, gradual increase in heart rate. But what we're looking at, point C and D here, are we working maximally? No, because look, we're able to maintain this exercise period for a lot longer, okay? So this is showing that we are, this is a graph of someone working at submaximal levels, or this is submaximal, whoops, exercise, okay? Why? Because we've got this, what we call a plateau. I'm able to maintain this exercise, maintain this heart rate of around about 125, 130 beats a minute for a lot longer. What then happens is, exactly what we've seen on the previous graph, as you stop exercising, we see a gradual decrease in heart rate. And what do we see at point F? We are back down to resting heart rate once again. But the principles are exactly the same. What's happened here? Nothing. Resting heart rate. What's happened is we've started to exercise, CO2 levels, sorry, CO2 levels have risen or increased, detected by the chemoreceptors. Blood pressure is increased, detected by baroreceptors, and muscle movement is de eh, sorry, increased, detected by the proprioceptors. I've then got to steady state or a plateau, and I'm able to maintain those exercise levels for longer because I'm working submaximally. But then I've stopped and I've got into my recovery phase. What's happened? CO2 levels. Blood pressure and muscle movement have all decreased, again detected by the chemo, baro and proprioceptors. That's been passed on to the medulla again. The medulla has this time sent an impulse down the parasympathetic nerve and it is bringing the heart rate back down towards resting heart rate levels. So that is the science behind how your heart rate increases and decreases. And there are a couple of example graphs on when you're working maximally and submaximally. But remember, the principles are the same. Heart rate increases for the same reasons, whether you're working maximally or submaximally. Heart rate decreases for the same reasons, whether you're working maximally or submaximally. You've got to know those